so after understanding what we are going to build in a full stack development so what are the different types of applications we are going to build by learning this full stack is so in the full stack development web development so we are going to learn about building web applications and uh, distributed applications distributed application and uh, mobile native applications mobile native application these are the three primary things that we are going to learn in our entire development process so we are going to build these three types of applications and uh, in these three type of applications usually our applications will follow different architectures you will learn so many architectures how to handle them so while learning about web applications distributed and mobile native applications you will also learn about uh, single page applications spa so that is a single page application architecture and you are going to learn about progressive web application architecture web application architecture so we are going to deal with all these uh, progressive web application architecture also so that means while learning web distributed and uh, mobile native applications our applications will also follow single page environment progressive web applications we follow these architectures also actually what is single page architecture so what is progressive web application architecture a basic overview i will give detailly we will see in the learning process actually single page application means user will stay on only one page and everything comes on to that page that is actually single page application that means one best example i will give you suppose i open this google in google so i am searching for something on google like uh, angular something like i am searching some results came now how actually i have to browse the results and how do we view the results uh, millions of results came we have to scroll down and you can go below you can see there is with page numbers like page 1 2 3 so usually you have to switch between the pages that means user will be navigated from one page to another page i click on page 2 you will go to the second page so this type of browsing or opening any content on a new window separate tab separate window all this is difficult especially when you are uh, uh, watching that website on a mobile like device or tab like device navigation between pages opening everything in a separate tab or window is not good user friendly single page application environment means user will stay on only one page and uh, 
everything comes onto that page. You can observe that Google, when I open images, image search, you can see in image search, hundreds of images are present, millions of images are present. Interestingly, how you will see here is when I scroll down, when I scroll down, automatically next set of images will be loading down. Next set of images will be loading down. There will be nothing like next page or previous page. So you, you see your Facebook, your YouTube, your Gmail these days. Earlier, you might have observed Facebook when you scroll down it says next post, previous post. But now Facebook, you can see when you scroll down, it continues to load the new things. And very important is when it is adding the new contents to page, it will not disturb the existing contents. That means without reloading, without reloading the complete page, without reloading the complete page, the new details can be added into page. This kind of this kind of environment is actually called as this type of environment is actually called as single page application environment. It is called as single page application environment. We call this as SPA single page application. We are going to learn how to build a such single page applications, single page applications. Next important progressive web application architecture is nothing but progressive web applications are more advanced in the current generation actually. Progressive web application means you will have an app-like experience in the browser. That means even you are using a browser, you will have an app-like experience in the browser, not like page-like experience, app-like experience. How you use an app, you will have a same experience in the browser. Such applications are called progressive web applications. You can see, suppose I will show you some website like some Photopia. This is a website. When I visit this website, you can see it is an online photo editing website. Online photo editing website and uh, you can select a new project. You can see, I can click on create. You can see that it gets us a document here. You can draw something here. You can design something here. It is a website, but having an app like experience. That means you are using Photoshop online. These are more complex. These are more advanced. Now these type of applications are called as progressive web application. Progressive web applications usually give you an app-like experience in the browser. These days, the most trending, so we have single page applications, and we have progressive web applications. In our full stack development, while learning the web applications, distributed and mobile native applications, we will also see the single page applications and progressive web application architecture, how to implement them. Don't think that they are separate applications. They are just implementation of an architecture to achieve that target. So single page application is an architecture that allows to achieve you that functionality, same as progressive web application also. So in the full stack web development, so we are going to deal with all of them and we are going to build end to end application along with front end, middleware, back end and everything. In this first, we are going to discuss, first we are going to discuss about 
the web applications. First, we are going to learn about web applications. So we need to first know about web applications. What are web applications? How these web applications work? What is the basic architecture of web applications? We need to understand all this. So technically, we have to know about the web applications and their functionalities. Let's go into detail technically now so that we can even start practical approach working with them. Right? So first, in order to understand web applications, before knowing about the web applications, we need to first know about few important terms. What are the regularly unknown terms? First, you should know. So what is a network? What is a network? In order to understand what is web, first you need to understand what is a network. Usually, many of you already know, and uh, it's good if you already know, like you know that a computer network, a computer network comprises of group of computers connecting with each other, connecting with each other for sharing of information, sharing of information, information and resources, for sharing of information and resources. A computer network comprises of group of computers connecting with each other for sharing of information and resources. They are connected with each other for sharing information and resources. Actually, actually, the first computer network, the first computer, computer network, the first computer network was uh, ARPANET, ARPANET, Advanced Research, Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, Agency Network. It is the first computer network introduced by United States Department of Defense, Department of Defense, Defense. So that is the first computer network. So ARPANET, Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. That is the first computer network actually. After that, I'm just giving a brief overview. After that, CERN laboratories, CERN labs. So council, council, for Council for Council for European Research and Nuclear Council for European Research and Nuclear. So CERN CERN Labs introduced 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 a network a network a network. They introduced a network for for general general and commercial purpose commercial purpose purpose. ARPANET was not for general and commercial purpose, right? And uh, CERN introduced the network for general and commercial purpose. That means how network is useful for general people. So what they have done is they established a few servers. And in those servers, like weather forecasting, daily news updates, availability of flights and all news, such documents they kept in that server and they made it available to the public so that anyone can connect to that server and access the details and use the details. So after that, 
once it became very successful and for public use also it is being used it started spreading all over the world this type of network for commercial and public purpose and uh, you know that so then uh, it got the name called internet internet so internet evolved evolved with this kind of architecture internet is nothing but so it is a network it is a network network of computers computers connecting connecting all over the world connecting all over the world over the world so it is a network of computers connecting all over the world so internet started internet started so all over the world servers established and the servers are maintained by various people all servers can connect with each other information can be shared across the world so internet came to existence so and you know different types of networks are there local area network metropolitan area network wide area network but internet so it resembles a wide area network that connects computers all over the world that is the basic brief overview of how actually the network came so but what happened is one of the main issue with internet is internet is not secured so that means internet is not secured so anyone can access information from any location so there is there is no restriction there is no restriction so anyone can access information from anywhere that was the point so we don't have any restriction so that's one of the major issue with internet to overcome that to handle that so what happened is the concept of web was introducing tim berners lee tim berners lee tim berners lee introduced introduced the concept the concept of web tim berners lee introduced the concept of web concept of web uh, in uh, early early 1990s in the early 1990s tim berners lee introduced the concept called web so what is internet and what is web internet and web both are technically not same so internet and web doesn't mean same they have difference so what is difference between internet and web the concept of web was introduced in the early 1990s by tim berners lee we call him father of web and tim berners lee is the person who introduced html hypertext markup language so now the first point here is so what is web you are learning web technologies or web applications first you should have a basic idea of what is exactly web what is the concept of web so without knowing web you cannot be a web developer that is the first thing you need to know so technically what is web technically web is web is a portion of internet portion of internet with restricted access restricted access web is a portion of internet with restricted access so internet directly don't have any restriction but web provides a restricted access web is a portion of internet a simple point i will explain here to make you understand about that so that means what is actually the web the concept of web here technically suppose we have 
some like India, India. So we have like some US, some you have like UK. Now all these are, all these are connected with each other. That means all India, US, UK, all are connected with each other. And they form an internet. That means they form internet. All are connected with each other. Internet, connection of networks, uh, connection of computers across the world. But important is here, India have its own web. US have its own web. UK have its own web. Usually, the web is under the control of that particular country government. They, their government have a restriction on that web. Web have a restricted access. That means, for example, one simple example I will tell you. Suppose BBC in UK had made a documentary and they uploaded on YouTube. YouTube. They made a documentary about India or some acts in India. Few months back it happened. They made a documentary and they uploaded on the YouTube BBC channel. Thus, video they uploaded onto the YouTube channel. So our uh, our country government so wants our Indian people not to watch it. That means because it is controversial and we don't want our Indian people to watch that video. Then when you go to the BBC channel of YouTube and you are from India, according to your IP and all other details, location details from where you are accessing. So if you belongs to India, you are accessing from India, that video will not be available to you. But it is available to others. Others can watch that video. Other countries can watch that video. That means generally people think that on internet I can watch everything. No, you cannot watch everything. You cannot handle everything. It has a restriction. So now actually, so it is not just internet. It is now web. So web is a portion of internet with restricted access controlled by that particular country related government actually. That's the reason you see, you open several websites. Suppose you want to watch online movies, then you open some websites. So, and immediately you will see a message that government of India, department of telecommunications have blocked this URL. You cannot watch this in your country. So that means we have more restricted access. So we are developing applications so which can have restricted access. We can decide who can access, what he can access. We can maintain authentications, authorizations, so that everyone cannot access everything. We can restrict them. That is the concept of web. Web is restricting. Internet is not restricting. Several websites today, several websites today, remember, several websites today are directly on internet. Several websites are on web. That means some websites are not on web directly, they are on internet. So you have internet also directly. When the websites are on internet, they don't have any restriction. Anyone can access from anywhere. But usually, so when it has to come to our country, our location, we want to access. Now, it has to pass through our web, then our web will restrict the accessibility. That is the reason you cannot watch everything, so you have a restricted access. So that means they will decide what to watch, what not to watch, because you know a lot of restrictions will be there. Facebook, YouTube, all these people have to follow the terms and conditions of right. So, see, 
legally illegally so much can happen right so because illegally so much can happen so people call some dark web or something like that but uh, they also have restriction they also have restriction that means uh, usually generally government will not monitor uh, which are not more suspicious even on dark web also several things are restricted you say some people know about some dark web or something what do you think if there is dark web which is cannot be restricted can then everyone illegally can go on dark web right if you know about something like dark web or something so everybody will go on illegal activities on dark web right but that is not also so easy because we have a lot of intelligence so which will restrict everything that means we can we can have the options even to handle the dark web related contents also but up to certain extents what they do is if they are not harmful they are not much complicated then they will leave otherwise anything is blocked actually right what do you think so these dark webs and all so are not known to our intelligence departments they don't know about what is happening there so those people are so genius that even our intelligence departments also can't handle them right it's not like that they know that if it is not a serious threat then that is not a concept right so that means so we have a restricted access we have a restricted access so technically when you are learning web development first you should know the concept what is actually web web so what is web web is a portion of internet and why it is named as web why it is named as web what is the concept behind it the concept of web tim berners lee introduced web i already told you tim berners lee tim berners lee introduced introduced web introduced the concept of web and uh, we call him father of web so what is web why he named it as web actually he got this complete uh, architectural idea from a spider web so from a spider web from a spider web you know a spider web actually a spider views the web in this way a spider usually views the web in this way and for example so it has the web right and important is suppose we have a room so we have a room so a big hall or room you can observe that in the room there are two or more webs so many webs may be present and uh, important is uh, all these webs for all these webs only one spider is not the owner actually we have a spider for this web we have a spider for this web for this web now what happens is some some prey get caught here some prey get caught here some insect or some prey get caught here then what happens is if a prey get caught there then a vibration will go through that wire and indicates that spider means a vibration will go and it will indicate the viber uh, spider now the spider comes back some the spider comes back and collects the prey collects the prey so that is what actually the concept here so it comes back and collects the prey right now what happens here is a message is sent a message is sent to the spider and uh, the spider come back and collects it this mechanism is that means it is going here this is called request and uh, it comes back this is called response web is an architecture that works with the mechanism of request and response so clients makes a request and server will send a response to that particular request so this is the concept and very important is so which spider will respond to this prey 
for example we have a left web and we have a right web we have a right web now tell me can the right spider can access this prey can access this prey what do you say can the right spider can access that prey so it can access the prey if if uh, this spider will give the permission am i right left spider gives the permission but if it is connected it can that means there is restriction it can access if that is giving access it cannot if it is restricting right that means the point is so it can access so they can be connected they can be connected and they can share information between them they can be connected and they can share information between them right that depends on the mutual understanding of that that's the reason you know several countries so which are not friendly to india you may not find those country related websites accessed here complete restricted you you can never access those websites here their websites you can never access here they are completely restricted it depends on the mutual understanding of this web right they are completely restricted lot of restriction will be there that is actually the basic concept of web so as a developer first you should know that internet and web these two terms are not same so web is a portion of internet with restricted access so web application web application actually web application application will have restricted access restricted access restricted access so technically how it works the technical architecture we are going to discuss about that we will see that initially so the point about web and internet is this so we have a web and concept of web and uh, now web was introduced by tim berners lee now web standards web standards web standards are maintained maintained by w3c and what wg what wg web standards are maintained by this by these two groups maintained by these two groups so web standards are maintained by w3 and what groups that means the new things on web the development of web the standards of web all are under the control of these people w3c and what wg that means html html related contents so javascript javascript related contents all these things that means the point is so when you are building a website or a web application so you have to follow certain standards the standards of building an application the rules for defining a web application how a web application should be and the technologies required for web application all these standards are maintained by these groups w3c and what wg web standards are maintained by these three by these two groups w3c is uh, w3c is a world wide web consortium yeah consortium consortium and uh, what wg is web hypertext application hypertext application technology work group technology work group these two people are maintaining the standards of web if you want to know what is newly introduced into web if you want to know how web works if you want to know what are the standards we need to follow to develop an application for web 
we want to know what technologies are suitable for web. All these things you can get from their official sources. You have their official website. So one is uh, w3.org, w3.org. This is the official w3.org. So the standards of web. So the standards. W3 defines the standards. That means how HTML works, what is HTML, what is web, all this. Applications, architectures, everything, they can be defined here. They are defined here, right? A developer always have to follow the standards. So the standards for web are defined by W3. Another one is what wg.org these two communities these two communities and uh, html is officially what is html later you will learn so html is officially maintained by these groups what wg since 2004 maintaining and evaluate evaluating this html what wg is doing it so that means anything related to web development, if you want to know, you want to keep updated about that, then you have to visit, you have to keep in touch of these two people, these two groups. So that means you will understand what latest technologies are coming, what are required, what their role and responsibility, how they actually work. Online, on internet, you can see several websites. But all websites finally have to borrow information from these two only. Any website related to web development, they are showing some tutorials or manuals or something. All the information are gathered from here only. So better we can directly come here because these people maintain the, the original. Means because these are the people responsible for it. Then they will provide a better information than anybody else. So we always follow this, we always follow this. So these are the standards. We will learn about the standards and all. So this is a basic point to understand about what is internet and what is web. So before starting with web application development, you have to first know what is web. After understanding what is web, now we can start understanding the architecture of web. How actually web works? How actually web architecture works? That means web application architecture. Once we know the web application architecture, then as a developer, we know how to build it. So as a developer, we can know how to build it. Let's see the basic web application architecture. So how everything works, how everything works. We will see that step by step. So I will give you a basic web architecture, how the web architecture works. So for that, you have to learn so many things. So architecture principles, how the architecture concept works and everything. I will give you a basic overview first, how web application works simply. Actually, how the concept of web works means web application works. A simple high level design of web application architecture. Architecture. Actually, in the web application architecture, so we have a combination of several things. What they are, let me first draw them and I will explain step by step. Generally, we usually have a client we usually have a client or user. And uh, we will have a web server. We have a web server. A web server. What is that I will explain, right? So we usually have a middleware. We have a middleware. Yeah middleware we have an application server an application server application server and uh, 
we have a database server the database server right so that is we have a database server database server actually how the concept works how the concept of web application works the concept how it works we have to understand that generally uh, what is a database server how the communication actually happens how this entire process works so database server is a computer this is the location it is a computer where the data that is required for that application is stored that means all the data is stored here all the data is stored here in a database so database server stores all the data in a database in a database so server is very huge i just given given you a simple block diagram here but server is very huge for example i will show you google one example we will see actually suppose on google in a google search engine i am searching for something like uh, so what is web i am searching for what is web and i got some results I got some results. I got some results. Technically, when we got the results, the question here is from where this information is coming? From where this information is coming? From where this information is coming? This is Google is providing this information from where it is providing that information. Actually, it is coming from it's a database it is coming from its database which is present in a database server actually in the diagram you see just a small box but in reality these database servers and the data centers are very huge. i will show you for example i will show you here on youtube you can go on youtube on youtube so let's search for so here let's search for uh, google data center google data center you can see so this is this is google data center this is google data center i am showing you inside the Senator google data actually, center so means inside the google camera, data center you can see this is the google data center this is the google data center you can see that video by yourself on webs you can see the building that you are watching is not google office that is the server the building that you are watching is the server that is the server that is server we will have server farms actually that means a huge farm of server that means millions of terabytes of information this is an inside that server this is inside the server this is the inside the server that means how the server looks like you can see you are watching everything inside server inside server these are very huge these are very huge so that is he that is the server you can see this is server so technically the data is present here the data provided by google to millions of people across the world so everything comes from here everything comes from here so that means the point is the point here is server is very huge right so lot of things are there to maintain that and everything so data is maintained in a database on a database server so different this i showed you google suppose you have a company every company will not have such huge servers they will maintain a small cabinet right they will maintain a limited resources they keep their data in that server these days we are purchasing all these servers from cloud so that means we are not originally buying a server and establishing it 
so we are using all virtually from cloud right technically all the information is present data is present in this database server actually in a simple way to make you understand at this level we can simply say that data is stored in databases like like oracle like mysql like mongodb mongodb these are the softwares so sql server these are the softwares which are used to store the data and handle the data for your application whatever data is there that is present in this application so technically data is in database server data is in database server and usually data is maintained through various database softwares like oracle mysql mongodb etc all these are database we have application server application server this is the location where our application is hosted so where our application is present we have an application server our application is present in this application server same like data server there will be application server for example i think majority of you know twitter facebook microsoft google all these people's database servers are majority present in dublin right dublin they are all present in that uh, geographical area because that is the location where it correctly suits for maintaining servers because they need to maintain large farms of server and they need lot of air condition because they generate large amount of heat actually and uh, uh, twitter data centers are in dublin facebook data centers are in dublin google data centers are in dublin microsoft is also in dublin majority of these data centers of huge people are all in that uh, dublin only actually the point is to maintain such huge servers you need a such geographical environment so that so every time it can provide the cool environment so that it will not heat up generate the heat we cannot provide air condition for that farms like so the point is they need a proper geolocation also to provide the service so data is in database server similarly application is in application server actually our application is hosted on application server our application is hosted on application server in this application server we have an application we have our app and this application comprises of in generally several layers of handling interactions actually application comprises of a ui layer user interface layer it will contain a ui layer so it will contain a business layer business business layer it will contain a business layer so it contains an ui layer it contains a business layer it contains usually it contains file system file system that means the repository of all the files that requires for the application detail architecture later you will see once you start working with it this is an overview of the web application architecture so inside that what will happen that you are going to learn in level by level options now this is the ui layer and uh, we have the business layer so we have the business layer right we have the file system everything application is maintained in these three ui layer usually contains the user interface business layer contains the logic to interact and file system comprises of all the repository additional files that are required for application what happens is this application this application so communicates with the database servers gets the data from the database it gets the data from the database so interaction with the data interaction with the database everything is managed by application on application server and to build applications that can run on application server to handle the client interactions connecting with the database reading the data from database inserting into the database everything in is managed by using the technologies like dotnet 
so technologies like dot net like uh, you can say that asp.net like php like jsp like python like node.js node.js all these comes under server side that means we use these technologies to build an application and host it on application server which is responsible for managing communication with the database connecting with the database reading the data from database inserting into database everything is managed by this application and usually middleware is also a part of this application only middleware is also a part of this application only is a part of this application only i just made it separate but it is a part of this application only application server only what is middleware middleware is nothing but it is a software which is used to handle communication it is a software which is used to handle the communication so that means whatever request comes so whatever the request comes from the client the client request will come the client request will first come to web server the client request will come to the web server web server will process that request web server is responsible for processing the request we also call web server as we also call web server as http server http server technically you will understand what is http and what is http server in our next level we will discuss about that so what is a web server also practically we will see that initially when client request comes the request will first come to web server web server will process the request initial request from the client will be processed actually request will come from the client request usually come from a browser browser or it will usually come from a mobile application or something initially web application we are from a browser the request comes to the web server web server will identify the request it will process that request so web server is responsible for handling the interactions like get like post like interactions so many others also here the point is web server identifies the request from the client and it will process that request to this middleware middleware is responsible for understanding the request from the client and any anything any data that is sent from the client any data that is sent from the client so is not directly understandable is not directly understandable to application and anything sent by application is not directly understandable to client then middleware will take the responsibility of handling communication between the web server and application server that means what middleware will do is middleware is a software this middleware software is responsible for so parsing the data and converting into understandable format of application then application will receive that data i am just telling only one functionality of middleware middleware can do lot of things middleware is a very big software solution and a lot of middleware are present lot of middleware are present various middleware are present several middleware tools are present so these are all the various middleware tools actually all the various middleware tools are all the various middleware tools these are all the various middleware tools so we have so many middlewares we have so many middlewares so we have web sphere so we have oracle fusion middleware so web logic servers wildfly so many now the point is these are not just responsible for so one they will do lot of things to make you understand in a simple point i am giving only one point that currently middleware is converting the data that is required to understand by the application into its format so and what application provides application provides it will get that and it will translate into the understandable format of client and it sends to the web server and web server is sends that to the client as a response for the request 
it will send a response to that request response to the request that is the basic communication and the popular middleware softwares the popular middleware softwares that are used so we have express as a middleware software and uh, we have oracle oracle fusion that is the middleware software so we have the middleware like web logic so these all the various different types of middlewares web logic server belongs to that so web sphere web sphere is also belongs to that many so many are there right the point is now what are the web server softwares actually web server softwares we have iis internet information services we have apache tomcat tomcat so there are so many web server softwares so so many web server softwares and the most popular iis internet information services apache tomcat different technologies use different different web applications yes yes right you will learn detailly where your concepts will fit you have to first fit into this concept right first you start learning then you will understand where everything fits first you know what fits here that's enough for you later you will learn where everything fits right so on the first day we will not learn what we are going to finish right so you have lot of things to learn so initially we are just discussing the basic overview and this is not internal architecture of web server and application server so don't worry about them so which we are going to use how we are going to use we are going to learn that is why we are here right we are going to learn all of them right so technically the point is now how this entire process works a simple overview you have seen now client side we have to present that as a response to the client to present that as a response to the client the technologies we use html css <coughs> javascript so jquery angular js etc all this so all this that means that we use for presenting the response to the client response to the client technically what we are going to learn in this i will tell you we will learn that but initially initially the point is how this entire architecture works entire architecture works generally any person who knows minimum software he have a knowledge of any software then software technologies if anybody knows then one simple basic thing everybody knows is if you have a computer you have a computer on this computer you installed a software and you are using from there using from there using from that computer itself then this type of applications this type of architecture is called as one tier any person who knows little bit about software he knows that and uh, if your application is present if your application is present in uh, your application is present in a server and uh, you are accessing that application on another computer computer that means so application is there and you are accessing from here then obviously your data and your other information is present here your data and other information is present here that means server contains your application and uh, data everything and uh, you are accessing through a computer and handling this this is that means your application is not where it is uh, used it is present in a different location different computer then obviously it comes under two tier application am i right two tier application and uh, currently in the web what you can see here what you can see how many servers are there 
that means we have an application server we have a database server we have a web server information is shared across various generally webs web applications always represent a three tier architecture understood that is a general thing yeah it is a three tier architecture that's a very common concept of course you will learn about these tiers in handling with them once we start building it right this is the basic web application architecture web application architecture now the point is here what is the responsibility of oracle what is the responsibility of jsp or php what is the responsibility of uh, web server and application server right everything you will learn don't try to learn everything in one day because i know that you have a lot of excitement and you want to learn everything in one day that's the reason your questions will be related to everything end to end keep patience you we are designing this course here so to make you understand about that right if you have to know about all of them you have to attend all our sessions right in one day i am not going to teach you full stack okay so level by level we will discuss everything and we will learn everything what is needed okay? this is the basic web application architecture now in this web application architecture usually what we are going to discuss and what we are going to handle the basic web application architecture and all so we need a database we need an application so for application server we need a middleware we need a web server and uh, we need to maintain the output and handle the output from the client side we need some technologies like html javascript and all so what are the basic requirements to build an application what are the basic requirements to build an application the requirements for building an application we will discuss detailly about them so first point is what is the role of this so we will detailly discuss now that means what is the role of database what is the role of application server what is the role of middleware what is the role of web server and what is the role of html css javascript we need to understand their role and responsibility where they fit that you understood today where they fit that you understood today that means oracle in database jsp php python node js in application oracle and web logic web sphere all these in middleware is and tomcat all these are uh, web servers html and all these are client side now the concept you need to understand here is what is the responsibility of this what is the role and responsibility of these technologies how they are used what is the responsibility that we need to understand detail that we will discuss in our next session right tomorrow we will continue with this hope you understood today's concept we just understood where these technologies fit now tomorrow we will discuss what is the role of database application middleware web servers and client side technologies once you know the role and responsibility then we can start practically working with that and mostly from tomorrow we can start the practical approach of understanding and handling and working with server and all other options right tomorrow we will continue with this